Hello and welcome to Property Matters on Dublin South FM and iProperty Radio. Sorry. Hello and welcome to Property Matters on Dublin South FM and iProperty Radio with Carl Tal and myself, Brian Fox. You can contact on social media at iPropertyRadio.com. Or actually, it's iProperty Radio. Will I do that again, Carl? Sorry. You're grand. Yeah, no, you can start again. So, yeah. Uh, just so for, you're, you're okay. Uh, sorry, sorry, Patrick. Um, uh, are you, you're okay with iProperty Radio, right? Uh, yeah, okay, that's the social media handle, yeah. Yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah. Hello and welcome to Property Matters at Dublin South FM and iProperty Radio with Carol Tan and myself, Brian Fox. You can contact us on social media at iProperty Radio or email at iPropertyRadio at google.com. Oh, See, it's not coming out here. Sorry, let me just write that down. Sorry, Carol. Sorry, Patrick. <laughs> uh, uh, I, I always... I pro- let me just write that while. down. Uh, at Gmail. I told... I told where, do you um, get, where do you get the Gmail from? There's no Gmail. Oh, sorry, at what? iProperty Radio at? Hello. No, it's just hello at iPropertyRadio.com. I, I know from recording voicemails when you want to say something specific and a few different dates, it always goes wrong unless you're right. It always, yeah, I, well, I splutter, you know. Uh, hello. Um, hello and I, uh, sorry, hello. hello. Can you just leave it out. Just contact us on social media at iProperty Radio. And sorry, yeah. email but, address. And, and, oh, you're on the screen. I'm sorry. It's here. I'm writing from my prepared script. I'll do it from the screen here. I'll, I'll do it properly, okay? okay? So, three, two, one. Hello, and welcome to Property Matters and Dublin South FM and iProperty Radio with Carl Tell and myself, Brian Fox. You can contact us on social media at iProperty Radio or email hello at iPropertyRadio.com. So, before we get started, a quick note of welcome to our new series producer, Breed Malloy. Let's just say you're oh, very welcome to the team, Breed. First up today, we're delighted to welcome back Patrick Folan, director with I Am Sold Auction House. So, Patrick, welcome. Nice to see you again. Thank you, Brian. Thank you. It's been a while since we spoke. A few, a few years, I think. Yes, okay. a, yes, lot, a lot of yeah, time. Yeah. In the meantime. Hopefully, hopefully we're we're back in uh, back in stride again of of um, of program making and so forth. And there's not going to be another research. We won't talk about COVID at the moment. But I first <laughs> want to ask you is, um, how is the current uh, auction market faring? Um, it's definitely a changing market. Um, we. S- I suppose from about mid to end May, we found a big uptake or uplift in the number of agents introducing properties onto the platform. So from maybe around 10 a week, it jumped to 20 plus per week um, out of the blue, maybe surprising ourselves a little bit. So just suddenly there seemed to be a bit more anxiety amongst vendors looking to move things a bit faster for various different reasons, probably a big part of it. The, 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 I suppose the newspaper reports and the, the general sentiment out there that things might be changing a little bit. So definitely vendors are looking for a faster, maybe more secure route to market. So hence we, we, we see an uplift from that. And then from the buying pool, it's definitely softened. N- not, not to a level that would worry us hugely, but from maybe the last 12 to 18 months has been very high volumes of inquiries, very quick bids coming in almost abnormally high and abnormally quick or you know uncomfortably so probably whereas now we're probably back to what feels slower but is actually more normal so as long as it stays some way reasonable and normal i think we'll be happy you know we'll be happy enough so it's gone from gone from very high point to a more normal point and that but that has yeah. been possible as well and uh, what's the sentiment like out there in, you know in relation to um um buying instead well we talk about buying because as you're well aware, in media circles, um, there seems to be a lot of anger out there in relation to people getting access to to, to a buyer's market. Are you getting any feedback at all like like that from uh, from your um, agents throughout the country? I, I think the buying pool have been frustrated over the last number of years, really, but in particular in the last year or so. Um, so the, the buying pool... Uh, have been put into a position where there's been such little supply, they've had to be, you know, maybe really active in the market and then found they've been outbid time and time again. So the, yeah. the, the buying pool has been frustrated. Now they're almost at a point where they're pulling back and softening it and, and almost throwing in the towel. Maybe, well, if the market's going to change, maybe we'll, maybe we'll hang back a little bit as well. So there's definitely a frustration out there. I'm sure anger as well, um, but uh, they've been frustrated for a long time, and, and you can't you can't blame them. Um, and I think a certain cohort have now actually thrown in the towel and that, or, or put the, the the search on hold. And I think that's that's what we're seeing. We're, we're not seeing the the high high volume where there might be eighty to one hundred people on a file. Now it's generally 
10, 20, oh, 30. Oh. You know, and it's the, um, is the supply problem is as big as we, we're hearing at the moment? Supply of uh, homes on, onto the market? The supply has been a massive issue for a long time and will, will be uh, by a long time, several years. Really? Um, yeah. it, it, yeah. It, but it's been really exacerbated in the last, from June 2020. It was okay. an awful lot of the supply at that stage was 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 sold quickly once we reopened after we won't say the the, the, the c word but um yeah, yeah, once yeah. we got to reopen again there was there was a, a nice amount of supply still too low but but a nice amount of supply that was on the market but that that got sold very quickly from June July August we had the busy, busiest quarter we ever had in Q3 2020. Um, and that was never replenished. So an awful lot of people who might have sold actually couldn't find anything to move to or, or, or they held back because they didn't want people in their home or they, they didn't issue notice to tenants because they, they didn't want to go down that road at that, that point in the market. So just the supply wasn't coming through to replenish it. And since then, um, there ha has been a really acute shortage of, of, of stock. Of all has yeah, yeah. 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 And is that causing anxiety with, with, with state agents, do you think, or... or Oh. How 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 are they how are we, how's the business reacting to that uh, level of lack of supply? Well, we would work with about three hundred estate agents and auctioneers across the country, so we have a good feel for the feedback. And I mean, since we've been in business about, about ten years in Ireland, uh, I've never heard them have too well. Well, actually, that that that's 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 probably wrong. In the last five years, supply has always been has been a problem, um, but from agents who are maybe dealing with 30 stock at a given time or 20 stock, a lot of them were in single digits and some of them down to almost zero at, at times. So it's been hugely problematic. Um, yeah. The only, the only, the only thing I'd say is it's because a lot of it was selling so quickly. It, again, it, it felt like the problem was even greater. A lot of them actually had okay years, you know, last year. It wasn't a bad year, but at any given time, they might have only had five or, two, you know, six properties as opposed to 20 or, or 25. But it, it was just moving so quickly, it, it was impossible to, 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 to keep a, a reasonable, what would seem like a, a fair and reasonable level of stock at a given time. So it has been a big concern for agents, although maybe at the end of the year when they look back, maybe the concern... It eased that concern uh, that that the, the sales levels were actually still quite good by the end of the year. And so how's the last year? Yeah, apologies, what, what, what? I just sorry wanted to come in on something you mentioned there at the start. You were talking about, um, in terms of the shifting sentiment, vendors looking to get things maybe sold, done and dusted quickly. Um, where where are your vendors coming from at the moment? Who who's your typical vendor at the moment? Um, so good question. Yeah. Um, we obviously are a platform for agents, so it's, it's, it's dependent on what those agents might have. But what we're seeing a lot of an increasing amount is properties that need work are actually a, a big part of it or an increasing part of it. Um, and I suppose, OK, there's concerns around the market, maybe in general, but add that to a property that needs work, which has a whole different level of concern for a buyer um, to see are they definitely in a position to buy this property and actually take on the works afterwards. So we saw both an increase in sales that had fallen through private treaty that a buyer had gone ahead paid probably a good price for it and then at a latter stage decided um let's get my quotes for my builder and let's actually see what this will cost and, and it was turning out to be a, a bigger project than they envisaged and maybe some of them I mean, okay material costs are huge but to get actually people to do the works as well is a big problem so um, a lot of sales fell through that came onto the platform then that they didn't want that to happen again um and also a good few straight to market that again they just foresaw the building costs as a problem and let's have a more secure route to sale i suppose so that 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 would definitely be a noticeable uptake um we are seeing we are seeing people that had been holding off for quite a while in selling and not the property wouldn't need work or it wouldn't be a property that 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 that, that the materials or the building would be an issue but their own personal circumstances maybe they had wanted to move two years ago they held held off so time time to move is becoming a maybe a more important one as well so that, that the process for online auction is about at least half the time it takes to transact in private treaty and the conveyance and process is a lot shorter so giving them the security of time frames as well has been a big one so they're probably the two um, like but, drivers that latter one is a really interesting one because for the past at least two years and possibly even slightly longer Estate agents nationwide have been talking about the absolute dearth of um, 
of uh, secondhand homes coming to the market. They've been trying everything and they know of sellers who have gotten value or potential sellers who have gotten valuations and were sitting and waiting. And there, wa there wasn't really a clear reason as to why they were waiting because it was clear that the marketplace was quite hot. Um, there yeah. were definitely more buyers than sellers in the marketplace. And the prices being achieved, certainly any time over the last year or possibly a little bit longer, you could have considered them prime and most likely peak. So what, um, I, I think that's a really interesting cohort you're talking about. Uh, what can you tell us about them? What's making them sell now? Are they thinking actually the market is perhaps about to turn and this is my last opportunity to sell at what might be in retrospect, might look back and see as the peak? I think there's there's probably two mainstreams. Sure, there's the the people who see this as maybe a peak or close to the peak. It's hard to it's hard to it's hard to say for sure. Um, but it's certainly a strong market for a seller and 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 one that 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 would be a, I would say classified as a seller's market. Um, so there's definitely that cohort. But that has been the case for a year and a half, you could say, or close to it. Um, so why didn't they do it a year ago? I suppose. So I, I think a lot of them have been waiting either for the right time for themselves personally, um, maybe maybe an unwillingness to make a move during a difficult time. Um, but a lot of them also, circumstances of finding another property or, or, or where they're going to move to, that has held an awful lot of them back. And we're actually seeing a good few vendors who are going to move in with family between, that they are going to sell now. They've been trying to find the house or they've maybe been building. There's actually quite a few, it's a fair point, quite a few of them building in the process of building a house. And they're just trying to, 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 to make that happen now. Maybe they need the funds from their sale. And that was always the plan, but they had held back, held back selling it due to the timing with COVID, et cetera. So I think a lot of the circumstances are people who had a move in the pipeline for quite a while but maybe didn't have something to move to or didn't feel it was the right time for them to, to make that move, maybe move in with family. Maybe they didn't want to do that during, during COVID times, I suppose. Um, so there's definitely a cohort of that from the, from the, 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 the movers who who, where time is a, is a big, is a big issue. Um, and then obviously the, the ones where the, the work is needed, I think they're from a, a selection of uh, their, their circumstances can be a, a, any, sort of, any sort of range. Yeah, I, I, but that's the seller side. Let's look at the buyers. Um, do you have a breakdown of what proportion of your buyers are, or successful buyers are mortgaged or are they all presenting or mainly presenting as cash buyers? No, we, we actually have an increasing, um, we've had it for a while. It, it's, I know last year was breaking back around 60% mortgage, which, which traditionally had been much different to that. I don't know. I don't have the figures for this year, but I, I, I would suggest it's similar. Um, I would suggest it's similar. Um, we, our process is, is, is a little different than um, auction traditionally where there's one day and you, you bid on it. Quite often, we will have a property going to auction in, let's say we've an auction on Thursday, it's Thursday, but a huge amount of the properties that were advertised for that will actually be sold beforehand to mortgage buyers generally, actually. So what, what, what would happen is, a mortgage buyer would come and see it. They'd probably say, "Look, I'm 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 hoping not to bid at the auction because my finances are are, is, are mortgage, but I would like to bid prior to the auction." And we will accept the, bring those to the to, to the vendor for a decision. So if someone wants to buy with a mortgage, we'd normally recommend them to get their bank up to speed with their thinking of bidding on this property, get their sister to check the legals, make sure they're in a position to actually put in a binding bid, and then they bid by auction. But maybe oh. three, three, three weeks ago. So a lot of our sales are, are done pre-auction to such circumstances. And so sorry, uh, yeah, sorry, sorry, Pat. So you're you're actually selling by auction as opposed to selling by the highest bidder. Is that what is that how you're operating? Yeah, yeah, well, it it's it's it it may not go to the end of the auction, is more the point. The highest bidder, yeah, sure. And we can open the auction window to bid today as opposed to bidding in three weeks' time or four weeks' time. Right. So right. most most mortgage buyers tend to need more time and we understand that as well as as the agents i suppose yeah. that, that the vendors would be well up to speed with this can go to the end of the auction or or if there's buyers particularly in certain types of property that might be more suited to a mortgage buyer we would say to them chances are we'll be seeking bids throughout the process and we bring them to you for a decision um so it's up to the vendors really but quite often if there's a strong bidder and they come in with a binding bid at Say four hundred thousand, for instance. We go yeah. back to everyone on the file to say a bid has come in at four hundred. 
if there's no counter bids. The vendors will often maybe ask for 410 um, and say, I'll take it out of auction if they come a little bit more with a binding bid um, to, to, to buy it today. But that, that's a big part of our business. And, and in fairness, that's why agents are using the platform because they know it's more flexible than maybe just saying setting a date, which would really be cash buyers only. Right. I'm just on that point, sorry, uh, Kat, just on that point, what is the, um, what's your feeling in relation to the, uh, basically only the two pillar banks, Bank of Ireland now and AIB, the only mortgaging uh, uh, banks there are, they're on loan now with KCP pulling out. I mean, yeah. are you, what's your, what's your feeling on that one? It's a problem. Um, th there are other lenders out there, um, but they're not mainstream lenders. Um, so it's not, I, I would say there's more than, there's more than two, and there are some specialist lenders who deal with maybe certain types of properties. But you're right in what you say. With two main street banks offering mortgages, the competition isn't enough. Um, yeah. The Irish, obviously, we have to ask ourselves, why is that? <laughs> and I mean, it's, it's, it's been discussed. There's obviously issues within the Irish market um, with regard to... Uh, troublesome loans um, where, where banks can't really recoup their losses and that makes it unattractive. There's other reasons as well. Obviously, there's a bit of uh, um, central bank also obviously control that makes it a bit harder to be in the Irish market, but it is a problem. And we do need to, we do need to look at how we can resolve that because we're not going to attract, by the looks of things, we're not going to attract European banks and therefore the competition is not going to be strong enough. Um, uh, is it it's too small a market, Patrick, for, the, for foreign banks to be interested, do you think, from the point of view of competition? I, I, I'm not an expert in banking, but I don't think so, because they can, you know, we, we've seen them come before. It wasn't too small then. What, what, you know, it, it wasn't the size of the market that lost KBC or Ulster Bank. It was the regulation and it was the... the um, I suppose, the legislation around... around um, repossessions of, of family right. homes and I'm not I'm not advocating for um, yeah. repossessions of family homes but there's something needs to be done to attract more banks there we are a small market there's no doubt about that but uh, we're within Europe we're not a, you know we're not an inaccessible market albeit smaller so I, I think even though it's a, it's a maybe a to another conversation maybe for another day but it's it, it is yes. a problem and yeah. in, in competing in a time when interest rates were coming down for mortgages it's concerning to see the lack of competition because I, I don't think we'll see them come down to where they need to be um competitively with europe because we're quite high we're, i think we're the second highest in europe or, or, or certainly towards the very top very good thank you and um, patrick we've only really discussed the residential side what's happening in the commercial side of the market um, so we would deal with about 25% commercial, um, so have a fair flavour of it, but it wouldn't be, 75% would be residential. Um, we are seeing, we are seeing from an, from a, we would deal with a lot of investors who look at commercial, look at residential. They're still buying from an investor point, point of view. There's probably a bit more caution, as there is with everyone, I think, about the market. But in terms of investors buying commercial, they're still reasonably active. In terms of people buying for their own use, it's harder to gauge, to be honest. There's, definite, there's, definitely, there's definitely a more cautious approach to the whole commercial end. Obviously, residential, we know there's not enough supply, full stop. It's probably going to hold, you know, the, the market is, the lack of supply will support the market and keep the prices probably reasonably strong, even if we go through a, a tough economic climate. It's not the same with commercial. Um, in different seg segments of the commercial market, there's probably there could be an oversupply. So I think I think there's um, there's a, there, there is an uncertainty around. I mean, how much office space do we need? You know, with the new world we live in, where people work from home, is there going to be a big drop off in that? Very hard to say right now. Well, one of the interesting trends we've seen are uh, rural pubs without um, licenses attached. Yeah, purchased for change of use for residential or for co-working homes and increasingly for coffee shops. So yeah. um, in, terms, in terms of the trends, the commercial properties, are they attracting as much interest as you would have expected? The pubs are actually quite high demand right now. We've sold a few hotels and, and, and former pubs and, 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 and licensed premises as well. There is good demand in that sector if you want to be you know, specific to, retain, to that. To retain for hospitality. 
if it's a pub without a license or former pub, I should say, um, then generally it's for residential. Um, if it's a licensed premises, I suppose it depends on where it is. Um, there's not massive appetite unless it's in a big town or, uh, you know, in a, in, in, a, in a good trading location, which in fairness, there's not a lot of those coming on the market. If, if, if they're trading well, they're, by and large, they're, 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 there's not loads of them co coming to the fore. So a lot of those regional towns or maybe less well-located pubs, they probably are for generally for change of use. And obviously with the new rules around, you don't need planning if it's, I think it's up to nine apartments um, uh, into, a, into a former pub. That's quite an attractive option taking into account most of those pubs are located in places that apartments would rent very comfortably you know they're normally somewhere close to the town center or, or, or in the town center and the demand would be there for them so i think i think we're seeing we're seeing um so quite a number of pubs lately and there's good appetite and increasing appetite for them um but but at a price as well i should say the values of them went, went well down in the last number of years uh, uh, so that the values aren't huge but but there is appetite for them well speaking of value before we wrap up what can we expect from your upcoming options so we've auctions in june and july so on thursday on thursday we have we have quite a number of as i was saying earlier uh, properties needing work so they can be cottages they can be houses in towns but there's quite a lot of those that would be a bit of value, um, but need work. In terms of investments, we have a big pre-63 in Drumcondra that's getting quite a lot of interest. We have stuff in Newbridge, we have stuff in Cork, we have stuff in Galway, and, and good appetite, good appetite for the investment stuff, both residential and commercial. But a lot of it would be the stuff I'm talking about there is a, either a residential or a mix, a mix of residential and commercial. Um, so quite good appetite for those investment ones. And yeah, lots of lots of lots of Lots of um, properties needing work. And, and then there's quite a few family homes where the, the, when I say family homes, good family homes ready to go, whereby the vendors want to move a bit faster. And, and again, generally priced at the right level, not, you know, they're, if something comes onto the platform with ourselves, generally it's a vendor who wants to move. They're not putting it up, putting it up for the fun and seeing how it goes. And maybe they might sell, maybe they won't sell. Generally, they're motivated vendors that for some reason want the speed, want the security, and the agents say, well, look, this is a platform that will, will give you that. Um, so, so yeah, and as I said earlier, a lot of the properties would have sold already as well. So we've had a busy, a busy month of June so far. Very good. Well, look, that kind of value is what I'm sure prospective home buyers and investors will want to hear. So thank you for that. And um, congratulations to Patrick Folan, director of I Am Sold Auction House and the I Am Sold team on celebrating 10 years in business this year. So uh, congratulations, Patrick, and thank you so much for joining thank us. Thank you, Carla. Today. I appreciate that as well. It's been a long 10 years, but a good 10 years. <laughs> uh, good, good to hear. We need, need to take a quick break now. Stay tuned.